Okay, hi. I am just waiting for my guest. Okay. Hi, Kristen. Hi, I'm Miriam. I'm the host of Apparently Speaking, Northeast Ohio Parent Magazine's podcast. Just want to remind you that all the past episodes of all the podcasts from the past two years are available everywhere podcasts are found. So thank you for joining me on Apparently Speaking Live as we try this new format during these days. And I wanted to welcome Kristen Gambasini. You probably recognize her from Northeast Ohio Parent, Star 102, Cleveland, WKYC, The Kelly Clarkson Show. I mean, I could go on and on. She's everywhere. She's also a mother of eight. Yes, eight. So um, welcome Kristen Gambasini of Perfectly De-Stressed. Hi, Hi there. Hi, thanks for joining me. So excited. It's so easy. It's like at home. I, it's, it's so simple. Yes, we don't have to leave home and we can do this. So it's great. So I know that um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, you and I both mentioned that, you know, a lot of moms have mentioned this to me and to you as well, that a lot of moms are kind of stressed right now. All the kids are home, something different they're not used to and scheduling. Do I need to keep everyone on a schedule? What do I need to do? And also then we're gonna kind of maybe transition if we have time and talk about, cause you're the guru of crafts and kids activities, uh, maybe some things like that. So what's your take on schedules? You have eight kids, so, and they're not always all home all the time. Right, and they're varying in age. So, um, you know, I've seen these amazing schedules being posted online of uh, like a homeschooling schedule and they're regimented and so on point. And I think to myself, that's incredible. There's no way I can do that. Me either. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just they're like color coded and like, and that's great if someone can do it. It is great. And I'm an organized person. Like I'm a very organized person. Those are like so pleasing to my eye. But when I, ha I have so many children that are so wide in age range, and to be honest with you, I just wouldn't be good at that. Right. I would not be good at that. So I, my husband is a school teacher. He's home right now, obviously, because of all of this, but he's a school teacher. And we talked about it, and we decided, you know, it, even though it's important to keep them on routine, even though it's important to keep them on schedule, even though it's important to make sure that they're continuing their distance learning and doing this stuff online that they're required, we were going to be a little bit more laid back with it because it just didn't fit for us to be that regimented. Um, plus, you know, we're big believers in like going outside to play. Yeah and yeah. creating and doing things like that. So for us, it was really important to fit that into it more than try to actually attempt to homeschool the kids. Right. <laughs> like by my, like I, I, it just, it just didn't make sense for us. And this too shall pass. Yeah. So, you know, there's a point when you realize that regardless of what you do with them right now, they're gonna eventually go back to school. Right. Everybody's gonna be on the same page again. So we're just trying, you know, we're basically as parents all just trying to like band-aid fix this issue until it, until we don't have to anymore. And I love having them home and I love spending time with them and I love doing things with them. And so that's what I'm concentrating on right now. Yeah, I love to hear you say that because I think we're totally in sync with that. Again, each person's different, each parent is different. So if that schedule and that routine is something that you need, I know, and my husband and I are both teachers as well, and we're not doing that either. And, and I teach online, so that's comfortable with me for me, but we're not doing that either. And their, their teachers are available and they're gonna be the ones giving them you know, what they need to work on parents don't need to come up with some big curriculum or even make them sit there, you know, six, eight hours a day. I'm calling it flex time um, because I'm using this flex time because I feel like I'm thinking of all the nights where my kids are up so late doing homework and studying for tests and then all the activities and the games and the practices that I didn't get to spend time with them and we didn't get to do family things. So I'm like, this is my flex time with them. It's okay. You know, we're going to, I'm going to use that and, and take the good from the situation, which is spending time with my kids. It's kind of more like whatever. And you know what? They're all gonna do, and it, I think it's different too if your kids have different needs academically or emotionally. You have to sure. take, yeah, each kid in into consideration differently. But you know, it's in that flex time and we're just, we're being flexible <laughs> and it's working for us. And, and my kids will get their schoolwork done. And you know what? Everyone's kids, like you said, they're gonna end up being productive members of society if they don't have a lot of school for a couple months, it's okay. 
Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I think having both of us having educators in the house, you and your husband, my husband, you know, there are things that we do already, even not in this situation, you know, like enforcing reading in the evenings and, and the importance of that. And, um, you know, basically, we're doing what we've always done with just a little bit more computer time since everything's online. But other than that, I mean, we're not really changing much as far as what we typically do with the kids, in the exception that we're spending way more time with them than we have been able to. Yeah. And that's a post that I actually made was that, you know, I see so much negativity about this. And I know there are horrible consequences to everything that's going on. I know, you know, so many people have lost their jobs. People are struggling financially. People, you know, not to mention the fact that people are getting sick. So there are so many negatives to it that in my house, in order for me to not stress and constantly be anxious, I have to kind of look at it as like a gift of family time. Yeah. I mean, my oldest is 20. Up until this point, he was barely ever home between school, work, social life. And I have been gifted a lot of time with him that I did not have before. And that's amazing to me because I, I missed him. Yeah, yeah. I, you <laughs> you know? know? The same way my oldest is 16. She's, you know, always, you know, and I feel... I'm going to try to adjust. I'm sorry. Hold on one second. I'm going to try to adjust so the sun isn't quite... Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Glaring. It's really bright. It's beautiful in the sun. Right, that's right. Better great outside yeah we'll take it yeah my oldest is 16 and she's always on the go you know with school and like I said and then studying and you know friends and and I do feel for her because you know they're missing out on things and it, it's hard for her but I am looking at it too like I'm getting to spend this time with her now I don't I'm not glad that they're missing out on things and and like you all right. the you, all the things you mentioned there are horrible repercussions but what I can do only in my little world right now is just enjoy them and not stress about school. They're, they're going to starting Monday, they're going to have school work to do. Yes. But the teachers are going to give them what they need to do. And the teachers are available. Um, at least, you know, in our situation, they're, they're great and they're available to communicate with and give them what they need. We don't need, I don't need to make them sit down all day and like, okay, from this hour to this hour, it's this subject. And then this, now some people do, and that works depending on their situation. But um, I know it wouldn't work for me. And I know even if I tried to pull that <laughs> at this point, it was true. And I think the schools are also taking a very, a little bit more of a relaxed um, approach to it, you know, as far as what they're going to be handing out. Our um, superintendent here in Medina has been very open book, very um, just open to suggestions, open to ideas, but also understanding that, you know, we're not going to expect you to do that. You know, we're not going to expect you to run a full classroom day in your right. homes. And so to each their own. And I know some of my friends are doing it like rock stars. I mean, yeah. they really are. They're pulling out, you know, this curriculum and they're doing this yeah. stuff with their kids. I, it's, I'm like, they, you're awesome. Yeah. That's, can I, can, can my kids like do online learning with you? Because <laughs> I don't think I can do that. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But, you know, and, and that works for them. Like we said, that works for them. And a lot of them have children that are similar in age. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is simpler for them to do that. But I feel like I'm just pulled in so many different directions with age and with what they need from me that I'm, I'm doing the best that I can. And I think yeah. in the end, that's, it's going to be totally fine. That's all you can do. And I guess I do, my message to moms and, or parents in general will just be like, don't feel guilty or stressed. They're all going to end up getting, you know, what they need. And yes. it'll all kind of work out and even out, you know. In Absolutely. And I'm doing stuff with them that's my strong suit. Yeah. I love to craft. I love to create. I love art. We're doing a lot of that. And, and it's been fun because we haven't had time to do yeah. a lot of that together because of their school activities and after school clubs and sports and just everything. So, you know, they are, I feel like, you know, they're getting something. It's just a little different, yeah. you know, but I think it's going to be, what's going to be interesting, I think, is when they're all older, all of our kids are older and they're looking back at this time period 
And it's going to be like, wow, that was wild. I remember that. Yes. I know. I saw, I think you did a post, I think, did you, of keeping, were, was it you? Are your kids keeping a journal? You know, my husband and I were discussing the fact that we're literally living history. Yes. Like this is something that's not happened in our lifetime. And, and it's something that is going to be talked about and discussed for so long in the future, how we handled it, do we do it right? What could we have done differently? All of that. So I thought it would be fun to document what my kids are thinking. What are they feeling? You know, when we get together as a family, one of my kids' favorite things to do is talk about stuff that's happened in the past on vacation or funny stories or things that people said or whatever. So I thought this was a great way to kind of remember this time period for them. So I, we don't do it daily. We do it maybe every other day, every couple days. And I have them write like a journal entry on a piece of printer paper. Uh, the younger ones like to draw pictures with it. Uh, my daughter, who's um, 13, she's very creative. So hers is like every other word is a different color and, you know, all that stuff. But we, we keep it. It's just a simple journal. I put them all together and they each have their section in it where their papers are kept. And they called it the Coronavirus Chronicles. Oh, that's hilarious. Yes, they came up with that name themselves. And it's it, number one, it's writing, which obviously that teachers this is schooling right there. Yeah. They, yeah, they want them to do that. But it's also funny to get their different point of views on it. And it also lets me know how are they feeling right now? I was just going to say, it would let you know too, like, is this one actually nervous about it? And they just exactly. Never that My oldest son is very, you know, it's fine. Well, you know, we're staying home. It'll pass. I realized that one of my children was actually very anxious about it and really nervous and was really missing school. So in that way, I was able to also be able to just talk with them on a level that yeah. they understood. And also it's funny because they get to, they get to release a little bit of their frustration there. I know my, my 10 year old is my stubborn one. He is so stubborn and you know he didn't want to do it one day and I said just do it for me please and he was so frustrated with me and he was frustrated with the situation and he took the piece of paper and a pencil and all he wrote was still living oh my and I laughed so hard I cried like yeah. we're all just frustrated yeah. you know oh and I told him I said that is going in the book that's going in the chronicle that, that is going in the chronicle so it's just you, I think we're all just figuring out ways to deal with it. And also, I'm eating a lot. Yeah, right. Well, everyone, you're all doing that. We have our excuse now, right? <laughs> Everything, every day, every moment could be a snack moment. Right. Oh, it's true. <laughs> I guess I'm just kind of like equating it, except for that we don't, we're not going to the pool. We're not going to tag. Like in the summer, we do this, but I feel like it's more cooking and stuff. But you know what? I think that's another opportunity. Like the kids, I mean, my daughter made yes. it for one night. They're baking. You know, they're, they're doing, we're doing stuff that we always love to do, but then you get so busy. Yes. So you can bring some And of even that back. my daughter, her friend baked a whole bunch of brownies. It was the sweetest thing. And she put them on plates and she delivered them to all her friends' doors with a little note. So, again, you know, to each their own. I thought that was such a great gesture. Our neighborhood's really close. There's a lot of kids in our neighborhood. My, my kids are really missing that yeah. social time outside. They go outside to play, and they're like, they see the neighbors. Hi. Everybody's playing yeah. in their own yard. Yeah. But, you know, it's still important to check up on your neighbors, and it's yeah. still important to make sure that you – know what's going on with everybody so we've actually made a couple deliveries too when I make the crafts with the kids you know we've bagged them and put them at the doors of our neighbors or you know different things like that as a matter of fact I was at the store now I have eight kids so I shop in bulk right, right. So, I mean, you have to right For sure. I do so I was lucky enough to happen to have gone to Costco like two weeks before all of this oh, happened so we had plenty of toilet paper thank goodness <laughs> But I had to go to the... Have, they should let you not have to abide by that limit. <laughs> I, I mean, really. <laughs> I was watching these newscasts about the toilet paper, and I'm thinking, I'm so glad that we, like, right. bought it in advance. But I was going to the dollar store, and this was before the stay-at-home order was enforced, and we needed a couple, like, bath items. And I was going to the dollar store, and I was, wa I was walking down a random aisle, and there was, like, a six-pack of toilet paper, which a six-pack for us is teeny yeah. tiny. Yeah. It was, like, small. But I thought it was, it was randomly put there. I don't know why it was there. And I thought, 
is this like a joke? Like, is somebody going to jump out and be like, you know, you just got punked, yeah. you know, because yeah. like, I'm going to pick up this toilet paper. But I brought it home and I bought market, like fresh cut flowers from the store too while I was there. And the kids and I made little tiny bouquets with the flowers and we put them inside the toilet oh, roll yeah, of the toilet paper and we delivered them to all the neighbors' doors. I love that. Just to, and we knocked on the door, and then the kids would run back to the sidewalk, and we'd stand there and wave to them. And so I think it's, you know, we're just trying to make the best oh, of it. We're trying that. to You're gonna be laugh. Like, um, can I have those? You can keep the flowers, but can I have those back? But it's such <laughs> a cute. And you know what, though? Also, like, we're joking, and I, I think that idea is hilarious, and I love it. But you are like, again, this is learning where they're not sitting, but you're teaching them to think of others and think outside themselves. And that's like, you can't get, you know, much more important than that. No, it's, it, and then that's, I think, when, when we hear like Governor DeWine, I feel like that's one of his basic messages. Please stay at home. Please distance yourself. But don't forget about other people. You right. know, don't forget about your neighbors that are home alone or your elderly or your grandparents or whatever, you know, we just have to be creative in how we're yeah. checking in on people and how we're making sure people are, you know, are you doing all right? Every time I've gone to the store, which has not been much at all, um, but, you know, I'll send a quick text to all the neighbors that I know are in that bracket of yeah. age where it's dangerous for them to go out. Do you need anything? Nice. Like I'm running to this store. I can get you anything you need. And it's mm -hmm. just, I think, it's so important for the kids to see that because up until this point, everything has been electronic related. Everything, you know, they're by themselves playing games, you know, even though they're playing games with their friends electronically, right. it's, I think that, that, you know, to show that relationship outside of that is so important. Right. And that, and you're coming up with these creative ways to still have that social contact and to help others, even though you're not, you know, with them, so to speak. In, in exactly. Yeah. yeah. So when we're making something like when we made the Play-Doh, we made a ton because we knew we were going to be passing it out to our neighbors. And it, was, it wasn't, you know, it's kind of one of those, it's homemade Play-Doh. It's not going to last forever, but it, maybe it'll keep your kids busy for like yeah. an hour. For a little while. I don't know. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> I love it. So, so schedules, you know, we talked about some people that are just kind of coming in. If that's work, if that works for you, great. More power to you. It's wonderful. But don't feel stressed if you don't have to do it. We are certainly not. No, neither one of us are really doing that. But they're going to be fine. Everyone's going to be fine in the end, and you don't need to stress or compare to you know this person who is doing it. Um, right. You have to do what works for your kids and your family. And then I love that you you know the things that you're getting creative with your kids. The the coronavirus chronicles, you know. But but it's it's we laugh. But then also what came out of it was you know, you were able to sense or get, get an idea of how some of your kids are feeling about it. And then the one if yeah. one's anxious or nervous and you can talk to them. And this is huge. I mean, yeah. they're staying home from school, you know, in a child's point of view, especially my kids, how it was, they came home on a Thursday and never went back. Right. You know, so it wasn't like a Friday, it was the weekend. It wasn't like, you know, well, it was the beginning of spring break anyway. It was yeah. a Thursday, they came home, they left stuff at school, right? You know, and, and then all of a sudden they're not going back. Right. And it's so up in the air, you know, are we going to go back? You know, they keep are, asking, yeah. are we going to go back? Or are we going to have prom? Am I going to do track season? Am I going to do, you know, any of this or that? And I'm like, you know, I don't, we don't right. know. So we don't know. Different. Everything yeah. is just so unknown. So I think that, and, and also watching the news, you know, we watch the news a lot together in the mornings. And I think that they were hearing words that they've never really heard before or in context with what was actually going on with their life. It's not something that's happening in another state or another country. Now it's something that's actually happening. They're talking about us. Right. And um, so I think it's important that you address that. But I think the biggest point I'm trying to get to my kids is that this is going to pass. Yeah. This isn't forever. This is temporary. And we're making do with what we have and how we can. And it'll be stories to tell and it'll be things to remember. And there's definitely lots of lessons learned and all of that. But it's not forever. But for a child, that's a hard concept to understand. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, they don't know, they don't understand you know, what, you know, what is that, they don't have that concept of time or it seems like, you know, forever or yeah, well, well when is it or what do we know? So yeah, and I know with like my, my youngest, she's nine, I, I sensed early on that she was getting a little bit, you know, like nervous about, she'd hear things, you know, and I finally said, you know, I, so I, we talked to her and just explained it, you know, in her kind of language, but I said to my other ones, you know, my other ones, like, let's just not talk about it so much in front of her, you know, she doesn't need to be worried and things like that, right. she doesn't understand it to the level that you do, so again, when you have kids all different ages, you really have to try to, it's hard because they're hearing it and everywhere, but to try to do that the best that you can, and um, I love that you're, you're really, showing them how to think of others even you know during this time and i think you know a lot of these things the thing is it's going to stick with them because you've taught them you know think of others just easy it's easy text when you order the storage you need anything just like you said you made those flower toilet paper bouquets you know dro drop off <laughs> the play-doh but just when you're doing something hey i can do a little extra for this person i'm doing it anyway and it just right. gets them in that mindset and they'll keep it you know hopefully for like their, their entire life of thinking of others um, so I love that you're teaching them that. Yeah, and I can't take credit for it. I mean, Mr. Rogers is like the king in that, right? <laughs> Find the helpers. Like, that's my motto. It's like my, my, my hero is Mr. Rogers. My motto is his motto. So, you know, I think that I feel like more people are doing that. And I, and I think that that's a positive that can come out of this are, you know, that more people are reaching out. The news is starting to concentrate a little bit more on that. Yeah. And what people are doing positively and how they're helping their communities. And I think that's great that, you know, they're starting to realize, okay, maybe we don't need quite so much negativity. Let's yeah. add, you know, some positive to it as well. So I think in, in this situation, I think um, Mr. Rogers would be very proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. Kristen, tell me the age of your, run, give us a run through of the ages of your kids. So my oldest is 20. And then I have... 14, 13, 11, 10, 7, 4, and 2. Okay, so if you can do this, <laughs> everyone can do this, right? If you're, you know, you've got them all, you know, some of them are home anyway, I'm guessing by their ages, but to have them all. And how are you coming up? You're so creative and you're so crafty, but you have such that age range. I know it's hard, even, you know, the ages of my kids are a little bit spaced out. So just to pick an activity or a movie, even anything that everybody wants, how are you handling that? You know, keeping them kind of a, busy a lot yeah. of taking turns. So uh, most people will ask me that, like, how do you decide? So actually, I have popsicle sticks, and they're numbered one through eight. Usually, it's seven because my oldest one is like, I don't even care. I'll do There's whatever. Like just whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't even want to do it at all. So whatever you want to do. So it's actually usually it's just one through seven, and that kind of alleviates the whole. You picked them first last time, yes. or. Uh, anything like that. So we have been pulling a lot of popsicle sticks lately. A lot of popsicle sticks. And I've also tried to limit their TV time a little bit just because um, I think it's so easy for us, even just as a background noise, to have it on all the time. And I realized, I think there was a moment yesterday where I'm like, I am never alone. Like, <laughs> there's always... Yeah. Somebody, and if it's not my kids, it's the TV. Like, yeah. there's always something. So I was like, you know, I think we just need to turn it off for a while. Everybody needs to kind of go to separate spaces, even if it's for, like, 15 to 20 minutes, and you're reading a magazine, reading a book, reading whatever. I, I don't even know. Like, whatever it is, just relaxing. But because I think it's so important when there's 10 people living in a house for us to all have a few minutes of alone, alone time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think that's good, important to remember for your kids, too. As we're thinking, we need, you know, a few minutes alone. I think that, you know, like my kids now, they're, we're always together all the time, you know, which is, I'm, I'm liking it, but I mean, I'm trying to remember too, especially as the older they get, you know, the younger ones, not so much, but like, it's okay, you know, for my 16 year old to have a little bit of, you know, yeah. she's gonna go in her room and just whatever, have a little bit of time on her own. And that's okay. You know, as long as it's not, you know, all day or long periods, you know, but I mean, I think that's important to remember too. They need a little bit of time alone too. So let them have a little space too. Absolutely. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, 
My oldest just went for a walk. We, we're really close to a park. It's two houses down. There's an entrance into a park here in Medina. And I can't tell you, I think he was maybe like in high school, maybe like a sophomore the last time he was like, Mom, I'm going to go down to the park. You know what I mean? And he looked at me yesterday and said it. And I started laughing. And I was like, oh, you're serious. And he's like, I, yeah, I'm, like, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm leaving. I am going to the park and I'm doing it by myself. And he did. And I, you know, it was kind of that realization that I'm not the only one feeling that way. Yeah. That whole, I need just a few minutes a few to minutes. myself. A few yeah. Minutes. Yep. Right. Because even if I lock the door in the bathroom, the kids are like, why would you need to lock the door? I don't understand it. I needed I you. I tried to under the door. If I locked yes. the door. Yes. <laughs> what could you possibly be doing that I cannot walk in and like talk to you? So, you know, it, 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 I think that, that that's probably the most challenging yeah. thing. That and the fact that, you know, we do, we are on a budget. We live on a budget. Um, and so the whole panic buying and everybody running yeah. to the store, that was scary for me as a mother because I couldn't do that. Right. You know, we, we have specific pays that are grocery pays and mortgage pays. And so that was that was nerve wracking as a mother where I was trying not to show my anxiousness to my kids yeah. and my nervousness about that. Yeah. Cause then and, they'll take it, especially the younger ones or maybe the more anxious ones. Like we're not going to be able to have food or you know, we're not going to eat. Food. Yeah. And you know, again, I buy in bulk. We had stuff in the freezer. We had stuff at home, but um, when I was seeing these broadcasts about people going and panic buying and, and hoarding and buying, you know, and the staples were gone. Mm -hmm. You know, that was very, that was very scary for those of us, I think, that are on a budget that can't just go and do that. So I was trying to manage that anxiety while making my kids feel like everything's going to be okay. Yeah. You know, th there's a lot. I think there are just so many, and I think so many people probably have similar stories. And I know, I know people who've lost their jobs and people yeah. who are really, really stressed right now. So I guess in the end, I just have to chalk it up that like, I feel like we are one of the lucky ones yeah. in the sense that I was already staying at home, even though I do my television segments and my radio segments, you know, for the most part, I do almost everything I do from home. And my husband's a school teacher and that hasn't all been decided and figured out yet. But in the grand scheme of things, I know that we are lucky and that we're blessed and that, you know, there are so many other people that I'm praying for because they're not in the same boat. And luckily, when I was able to go to the store, you know, seven days, six days after all the hoarding and panic buying, I was able to find what I needed. And as a matter of fact, we actually got a little creative with dinners and tried some new things because, yeah. you know, those are the stuff that was on the shelves. And I thought, okay. You know, we'll try this. So we've actually kind of been trying different foods as well due to the fact that everything's been yeah, sold out. Just take what you can get, yeah. Yes. yes. I literally, like, the kids sat down the one day. I can't even remember what it was because we've, we've tried so many different things, but they were like, what is this? But they ended up liking it. <laughs> It was just a different, it was a different meal. It was a different thing. But, you know, that can be a learning experience, too. Right. You know, we tried sushi for the first time, you know, and that was a huge deal for them. I did it because it was mostly what was there to buy that I could kind of create. But um, it ended up being a learning experience and a first time for, yeah. for that. So, yeah, lots of news, lots of firsts. It'll be interesting to see you know, kind of when things kind of, I don't want to say go back to normal, but, you know, ho hopefully soon when, you know, they've, the medical professionals have, you know, figured something out and we don't have people getting sick and all that, what, what kind of things stay, you know, with families? That'll be, yeah. you know, what, and what I've read a lot of things. Yeah, I've read a lot of people posting things about, you know, will things go back to the way they were? Will things be different? And I honestly, I don't know. I'm interested yeah. to see how this changes the dynamics of the family. I saw a really good post that was like, you know, before the quarantine and it was everybody just sitting on their phones wow. in different places in the house and after the quarantine and it was families out at the park going for walks, spending time together. So 
I'm interested to see that, that and I, that stuff we've already done, like as my family, yeah. you know, that's that we've already, we already do a lot of those types of things. And I can't say that everybody does it willingly. A lot of the times it's like forcing the older kids, like, no, you have, yes, we're doing this. You're going to do this. And, and, you know, they gradually go along because they don't have a choice, but I just, I don't know. I'm interested to see how this changes yeah. just the dynamics of families. Hopefully it will be, you know, positively and, and uh, the positive change for that. Hopefully, yes. Um, and Kristen, I know that you, like I said, you're like um, craft guru. So I know on your site and your blog, you have so many ideas and activities. Tell us a little bit about that and how people can find that stuff from you. Yeah. So when I first started my blog, I have to say it was more of like a home improvement DIY blog. And it's still kind of what I do because I was basically remodeling my home on a very minimal budget. I mean, very minimal budget. Public school teacher for a husband. I was staying home. We have a lot of kids. So that's kind of how it started. But when all, and I would do, occasionally I would throw something out there that would be for like a kid craft or something to do with a family. But when all of this started happening, I kind of just switched my focus for a while onto more of family activities and crafts. And just because I knew that right now, even though I know a lot of people that are doing home improvement projects in their home because of the time that they have, um, that I felt like the, the crafts and the things that you could do to keep your kids busy was probably going to be more needed than my tips for shopping at the restore because we're really not going to the restore right yeah. now, you know? So, I've started kind of using my kids, I guess. We started experimenting, and so we made Play-Doh. And, you know, we probably made five different types of Play-Doh before we found the one that we thought was the best recipe. Um, homemade chalk paint, and that way they can go outside and, and play. And I actually just did a tape segment for Kelly Clarkson on how to make chalk, homemade chalk. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it's kind of evolved into this. I think once all of this dies down, I'll probably go back and do more of the home improvement and DIY stuff again. But for now, this is working. And you can find, I try to give you all the instructions and all the details and make it really simple. And I tend to shy away from things that seem very complicated okay, because I like my kids to help me. So I try to keep in mind like stuff that is either already in your pantry or that you can actually find okay. at the grocery store right now. Mm -hmm. So it's all on my blog, perfectlydestressed.com. And then I'm on Instagram most, so perfectly de-stressed. And again, I, and I, I always answer questions. I get tons of messages. Like, you know, somebody made the Play-Doh the other day, and they're like, it's, it's sticky, it's this. And I'm like, oh, we had that. I know exactly what you did. Uh -huh. That was like recipe number three. So I'm more than happy to answer questions, but for the most part, I just want to help. I, this is like the only way I feel like I can help yeah. right now, other than obviously, you know, doing stuff for my family and my kids. But this is kind of my way of reaching out and helping, like, even if it gives you an hour, right. even if the kids are playing with, that's one hour that you can, like, eat a bag of chips. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely check her out. Um, it's great. You know, check her out. Follow her on Instagram. Check out her blog. Um, you know, I was like checking out a lot of those. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do that one. I'm going to try that one. And and I love how you have it set up. It's not like a huge, you know, an hour long read before you get to the actual gist of it. So you, <laughs> yeah, that. like literally when I when I find a recipe and I have to scroll down like four paragraphs of how that written. <laughs> Came up, like, just tell me how you made the chicken. I just want to know how you made the chicken. I know. My daughter, it's funny because she was looking, she wanted to make something last night. And so she said, I'm going to look up this recipe. And so she was looking, she found, and she goes, she was, I saw her scrolling, scrolling. So I knew, you know, and this was her first experience. <laughs> and she said, where, what's happening? Where's the recipe? And I said, oh, yeah, it'll be way down. She goes, but why? You know, she <laughs> Just show us the recipe. So I try really hard. I try so hard not to do that. You know, you're coming to my site. You're looking for something. I want you to just be able to find it and print it out or write it down and go. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. Yeah, look her up. Perfectly distressed. Kristen, thank you so much. It was a total pleasure. Thank to you. To you. It was and fun. I think, um, hopefully what some people uh, needed today. Thanks. I so hope much. so.
Thank All you. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.